everyone, this is Matt with Motion VFX, and today we're releasing a new callout pack called M Callout Specs. It's designed specifically to do things like this. So if you have certain specs or details that you want to list out in a cool interactive way, then this is a perfect pack for you. Let's go ahead and jump into Resolve and see how it works. All right, so once you've installed M Callout Specs from the M Installer application, it can be located up here in your effects panel. Under Effects, Motion VFX, you will see M Callout Specs right here with a few different categories to choose from. We've got transportation, components, audio, devices, all sorts of things. I'm just gonna click on the main category right here, and this is gonna bring all 50 of these presets all in one location. You can hover over these to see how they're gonna look on top of your footage. So I'm just gonna scroll down here, and I think the analytics callout will make sense with this kind of smartwatch shot here. Now, rather than grabbing this and putting it directly on the clip itself, if I want more control over the in and out animation and the duration, I could use an adjustment clip and position this right over my footage and then put the effect directly on the adjustment clip. This gives me separate controls over the duration of the title. Okay, so taking a look over here at the inspector, if you take a look at the first drop down menu, most of these settings have to do with the tracking, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. For now, I'm just gonna collapse this. And just below that, we've got our title controls. So this is where you could adjust the actual position of the title. You can also come down here to the title text controls and customize this however you want to. You've got control over the font, the scale, and there's also the subtitle control right here. And then coming down here to the icon controls. So you can disable this if you just want to have the text with the line. But when you have the icon enabled, you actually have a few different icons to choose from. And you have all the same icon options within every category. So for example, all of these feature callouts will have the same list of icons. The same icons can be found in all of the device presets and so on. And all of these animate on in a nice way. So you can see here, you can also increase the size as well as the thickness of the lines there and the color, as well as the background control here. So we can make this more rounded if we want to. We could also change the color of the background here. So if we wanted this to be a little bit more transparent, we can simply just lower the alpha channel right here. And then just below icon, we also have the line controls. So you could disable this. You can also reduce the line length if you want the line to point the opposite direction, or if you don't need it to go this far, you have a shorter title, you can simply just lower the line length. And you also have the line position, which is really just the second segment right there. It's kind of at this angle. You can also change the thickness of the line as well as the color. And then just below that, we've got the track point controls. So again, this is gonna make more sense whenever we've tracked the title, but you can disable the actual tracked point if you want to. You can also position it slightly offset from where you've tracked. And this is pretty much the same structure you're gonna have with all of these presets in this pack. You're gonna have your callout controls, title controls, icon, line, and track point controls, as well as your drop shadow controls. So why don't we go ahead and reset this and let's actually track this onto our shot here. So I'm gonna click on this icon to go into the fusion page. And right down here, I've got my media in, this is my footage and I've got my title preset right here, and then the media out node at the very end, which is returning everything to the edit page. So what I'm gonna do is click on media in and hit shift spacebar and just type in tracker, and this will insert a tracker node directly after our media in. And with the tracker selected, I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard to bring this up in my left viewer. Now I'll just grab this little small square and position this right over the watch, kind of where the shadow is. I think this is gonna give us enough contrast for the tracker to pull off a successful track. So now I'm gonna come over here to the inspector and I'm gonna go ahead and click track reverse from current time. And that's gonna go backwards like this. Now I think as this gets to the bottom of the frame, it's gonna kind of freak out a little bit like this. That's no problem at all. We can fix that just by finding the very last frame where it was actually locked on, so it looks like about right here. And then after that, it kind of goes chaotic. So we'll open up the spline editor right up here and make sure we're looking at the displacement path of our tracker. And this is the last frame that was actually locked on. So what I'm gonna do here is delete everything before, and that's gonna eliminate the path. But what we could do is select maybe the last three keyframes or so and just right click come up here to gradient extrapolation 
and this is going to just continue the estimated path of where it thinks that tracker is going to be. It might not be perfect, but I think being at the beginning of the shot, also with this title having its own animation, it's gonna be a lot better than having something move all over the place chaotically. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to the first frame that we started the track on, and then just click on track forward from current time. And it should have no problem with the rest of this shot. Looks pretty locked on there. Okay, now we can close the spline editor and I'm just gonna click on the preset here and come up here to call out controls. Okay, and then I'm just gonna right click center point and come down here to connect to all the way down here, tracker one, tracker one path position. And that's going to lock our preset onto that tracker. So if you play through there, you can see in comes our call out. It's locked right on to the watch. And at this point, we can go ahead and go back over here to the edit page. And so we might want to adjust the framing, the position, because we've got this bright window back there and I want the text to be plenty legible. So I'm gonna use the linked angle here. You can see if I rotate around, we can kind of position that title around our call out. So maybe we'll push this a little bit over there. And you can also adjust the distance with this slider. Now, both of these parameters are only relevant if you've got the linked call out mode selected. If you have static, what this does is it keeps the title locked in place and simply just moves the tracker point around it. And under static, you've got separate controls over the title. So we could position this you know, anywhere we want like this, and it will stay there while the tracker locks on to where we tracked. So I think for now I'm gonna use the linked position here and let's just position the angle, maybe push this over a bit like this. Now at the moment our line kind of has this acute angle and maybe we don't really want that. We could go down here to the line controls and you've got this line length slider. So if you increase this, this will of course make it longer, but if you actually go backwards, you'll start to see that the line reverses just like this. So we'll try to do something kind of like this. And then we can also go into the title controls and we have this title position control. So we'll just move this right about there. And then we also have our title controls right here. This is just for the text. So we can go ahead and customize this. And let's just position this to the left of that icon. We might have to make the line a bit longer no problem we'll just increase that length and the subtitle controls we can also customize this and then under the icon controls you can see we've got this icon list that has a bunch of these different icons every one of these is actually animated so you can see here this is what the download animation looks like you can try something like the feather so they all kind of have this nice little line drawing on animation so I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on the pulse for now. And you also have control over the color. Let's try something like a more of a purple color maybe or a pink as well as the background color. So I'll try to make this a little bit darker or something like that. And then coming down here to track point, you also have this extra little track point offset control. This will move the entire title, but keep it locked on to where it was originally tracked. So this lets you kind of reposition if you wanted to use a higher contrast element in the frame to do the tracking, but maybe you actually want the point of interest to be just slightly to the left, something like this. You can use the track point offset control right here to do that. And you can also disable the tracker itself if you want to. You can also change the color. And let's come up here and readjust the angle. Now that we've written some text and put everything over to the left side, I might want to kind of readjust this angle so that we're not running up against the outside of the safe areas there. Okay, and here's what that looks like. Okay, so for this next shot, I actually wanna show you how you can use two callouts at the same time, but with a slightly different time offset to make it more interesting. So I'm gonna start by grabbing another adjustment clip and we're just gonna layer this right over this shot here. Now let's go ahead and use this camera preset to draw some attention to the camera details right here. So I'm gonna go here about to the middle of the shot and I'm just gonna go ahead and customize my text here. And for the subtitle, we're gonna go ahead and do 24 millimeter F 1.8. Maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger there. And this one also has a couple different icon options. We've got a controller, a mouse, a smartwatch, tablet, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on the film camera. 
maybe we'll just position this a little bit more closer to that title. Now I'm going to come to the very top again and I'm going to run through this a little bit quicker. So we're going to click on this icon to take us into the Fusion page. And then right after the media in node, I'm going to hit shift spacebar and bring in a tracker node. Press one to put this in our left viewer over here. And I'm going to grab the small little square and drag this right over the camera. This should be a pretty easy track because, you know, it's a white phone with a black camera. So there's plenty of contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and hit track forward. OK, and then we're going to go into our preset right here and go to the call out controls, right click center point, connect to the tracker one tracker path position. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the static option here and let's use the static point to position our title right over here, something like this and maybe a little bit higher because I'm going to put another one right below it. So let's go back over here to the edit page and I'm going to grab another adjustment clip. And this time I'm going to kind of stagger these a little bit. So the first camera stat comes up and then, you know, a couple seconds goes by and then we're going to have our second call out right below this one. So for the second one, let's go ahead and try the battery preset, which is up here in components. So I'm going to grab this battery preset and drop it onto my upper adjustment clip. And why don't we go ahead and go into the fusion page and do the tracking first on this one. So again, I'm going to add another tracker node. And for this, I don't want to point to the camera. I kind of want to point over here to the battery, but you can see there's nothing really high contrast for the tracker to grab onto. So I'm still going to track the camera, but we can use the tracker point offset controls to offset the track. Now, something that might kind of throw off this track is the call out underneath. So if I go to the edit page and simply just select the adjustment clip below and hit D, to disable it and we're going to go back into fusion here and now you can see I have a clear view of the footage without the other tracker which could potentially throw off the new tracker that we're trying to lay on top. Let's go ahead and track this one forward. All right and then same thing we're going to do the call out center point connect it to the tracker one tracker path position and let's go back to the edit page and we can turn our other adjustment clip on and if I go kind of to the middle here we can use this to position our battery call out. So again, I'm going to use the static for this one and let's kind of position this one over to where it's pretty much aligned with this one. In fact, I might actually start where they're overlapped just to get the position aligned. So that looks good. And then I'll just move this right down below. I might even want to go into the title controls and just lower the overall size a bit like that. And we can move the icon so it's kind of matching where the camera is on this other one. So I'm going to push this a little bit here on the right side of this call out. Now, again, the tracker is pointing to the camera and we don't necessarily want that. So if I come down here to the tracker point control, I can actually move this away from where we've originally tracked it. So I'm just going to position this closer to where I think the battery might be. And as we play that through, you can see both callouts are stuck to the phone, even though on this battery callout, we're using the camera to track the tracker point. So I think in this case, those two callouts work really nicely together. All right, well, that's going to cover M callout specs. You can learn more on our website at motionvfx.com. There's a link in the description. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.